Good evening and welcome. This is Sports Report. I'm Andy Michaud. This is Matt Hatfield. And Matt brought along his special Halloween bucket, but there, there's no candy in it yet. No candy in it, and our faces aren't on the pumpkins yet. But we do have football. We do have football as it's getting closer to the postseason, and we'll start things off, Andy, in the Peninsula District. It's a clash between the Bethel Bruins and the Denby Patriots at John B. Todd Stadium in Newport News. Bethel coming off a come-from-behind win over winless Minchville, while Denby lost a defensive struggle against their Newport News rival, Woodside. Denby in the blue, and it's L.J. Taylor, and a quick little gainer out to Donovan Johnson. Little pick up there. Here's Taylor again. Not, not going to throw it. I'll just take off with it this time. Much bigger than the pass. That's all right. 35-yard gain down close to the red zone, but not quite in yet. One of those dual threat guys. He can run it. He can throw it. He is talented. And so is Monte Banks getting the Patriots closer to the end zone. They will settle for a field goal as that Bethel defense holds him a 22-yard boot by Gerardo Aguilar. And that Bethel defense, Andy, has been tough all year long in that bare front. Can the offense, though, match the defense's excellence? Well, DeAndre Gillis is going to try. He gets one to the outside, pick up a couple of yards, and here is Jordan. John X. Jordan, big guy, 6'3", 255 pounds, 35 yards. He rumbles up the middle. I don't want to try to tackle that guy. Here's Jordan again, banging over defenders, down to the six-yard line. And you know what? It works so well. Why not try it again? He is so powerful from that fullback position. The bulldozer right there, a six-yard touchdown run for Jordan. And you know Coach William Beverly has to like that. His team in front now, 7-3, second quarter, and Denby will have to punt it. T.C. Chisley, senior defensive back, a versatile standout. He's going to return it in a solid gain right here. Some nifty maneuvering there. 15-yard pickup for Chisley, who's now playing quarterback for the Bruins. Yeah, why not? Now he's going to have a toss out to Gillis. Gillis, who turns it upfield, bangs his way down. Big shot at the end of that. But he gets it inside the red zone. Then Chisley, all right, I'll take it myself. Fourth down, he takes it himself and he keeps on going and right into the end zone. It's 14-3. Neil Anderson with that clean your clock hit there for Denby, but Bethel's often starting to pick it up there and the defense has been tough all year long in that bare front where they send everybody at the line of scrimmage. It's just jambled up right there. LJ Taylor's going to find an opening though and it's Donnie Johnson here. He's going to take it the distance. 64 yards for a touchdown and Marcellus Harris, the third Patriots on the board or are they? Yeah, all right, it's a touchdown. Everybody celebrates 64. Oh, 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 wait. Oh, no. That, oh, that's not good. Oh, wait, that's wait. a penalty and a personal foul, and it's coming back in a 64 yard touchdown. Painfully gets wiped off the board. It's wiped out, so Taylor will have to try to do it again. And that Bethel defense is coming with the pressure. This one will be caught here for the Patriots, but very little gain there as Jordan Williams makes the catch. Taylor now rolling to his right, and he will be brought oh. down. Two Bruins converging for a sack. All right, back to offense. Chisley now over the middle. This is his only completion of the game, and it's Marcus Pegas. 35 yards. That's your only one. That's a pretty good one. 35-yard touchdown, 27-3. to three. Just once is all you need there for the Bruins through the air as they lead it by a Ooh. wide margin. Now, you see the big hit there on Keshawn Chisholm. That Bethel defense flying around. They've been great all year long. Now it'll be Taylor trying to get them closer to the end zone, a short completion to Shaquan Jones. Now Shaquan Jones there. On the keeper, he'll get it in from a yard out, but no try for a two-point conversion as that will be the ball game, folks. 27-9, the Bethel Bruins are victorious behind Chisley's two touchdowns, one passing, one rushing. Jordan has two rushing scores, while Denby held the 77 yards passing in the loss. Bethel helping their playoff chances in Group 5A South. On the Peninsula District, Phoebus over Woodside, 41-34. Jamari Becknell with 221 yards rushing, two touchdowns, also a touchdown catch. Justin Wright with two touchdowns through the air, while Tyre Tyler, four total touchdowns. Tamir Walker with two scores for the Wolverines in defeat. Still on the Peninsula, Heritage by one point over Kikitan, 14-13. Ooh, it was a squeaker. Jeremiah Boyd, the guy they can thank with a touchdown pass and a touchdown run, while the Warriors fall despite Desmond Savage completing 15 of his 19 passes for 144 yards and two touchdowns. Up next, Granby, Cox, we go to the beach. Kind of a hard matchup here. It's a rare Eastern District versus Beach District, but they're now conference rivals in the Coastal Conference, and Granby is surging now. Over 500, a win over it, four and three. Cox coming off back-to-back -back losses to First Colonial in Salem, trying to get back in the win column, and Matt DeMoss is the guy that will hand the football off too early to get in front. A seven to nothing lead for Bill Stachelski's Falcons at home. Cox in the white, if you're wondering, by the way. 
Granby in the blue, and this is Cole Johnson, the quarterback. He's going to drop back. He's got a lot of time. He's still got a lot of time. He's going to fire downfield, and he's going to find Marcus Johnson back in the end zone. Is it good? It's good. 31-yard touchdown pass, 14 to nothing. Falcons hitting the ground running. Johnson and Johnson extending that lead for Cox, and now the pressure's coming, but Cole Johnson, he's as cool as a cucumber back there, finding Matt Damasi. Screen pass, and look at the maneuvering there by Damasi. 31 yards to the house, and the Cox offense is really humming here. 21 nothing lead still in the first half, and they might not be done, but Graham beginning to kick off, trying to get good field position here, and unfortunately for Seiko Wilson's comments, the ball will pop out. Recovered by Frazier Wall. He's going to drag it all the way inside the red zone. He's going to put him in pretty good field position here. 21 to nothing as we're still in the second quarter. And Grammy backed up in its own end. It'll be intercepted by Dijon Askew, and that's a walk in touchdown. Seven yard pick six. Doesn't get much easier than that for Dijon Askew. And the extra point, though, ew, wasn't so easy there as that'll be no good. Nonetheless, the Falcons eight points away from a running clock margin. 27 to nothing. Later on, Johnson again, over the middle. Tavion Robinson, goodbye. See you later, 58 yards on the slant. And it is now rolling for Cox, and it's 35 nothing. The Cox fans have to like that because Johnson's pass went to a freshman, Robinson, so you'll see him for three more years. And Johnson, the JMU commit, rolling to his left, scrambling there, and just the presence of mind to find the open receiver at the last minute. It's Jake Wallace with a seven-yard touchdown catch, and the Falcons looking very sharp off those two losses in a row. All right, well, we're going to add some more. Here's a 31-yard field goal. Jordan Clemens tacks it up to 45 to nothing. No relation to Roger. But Cox is up by a huge amount here. Granby, tough way here on the road to have this play out here. Keyshawn Brown, though, is not going to quit or throw in the towel. He's got an open man. It's going to be Bryce Boyd, 52-yard touchdown catch on the juggling act. He's got a career after high school football. There you go. 45-7. to They avoid the shutout. You're playing for pride. You still got to have that with you. And they're going to get some more here on a blocked punt by Roger Williams, picked up by Quishon Perkins down the sideline. Look at the big man go. And he stopped at the one. He's knocked out of bounds. He doesn't get in. Nice for Coach Wilson to see his special teams guys continuing to compete hard here. And the comments will punch in on Ronald Santiago's one yard touchdown run. So the fourth quarter good to Granby. 14 points outscoring the Falcons. However, the problem was they got outscored by 45 in the first three periods. Well, you know, it's, it's tough. This is a tough way to end it right here. Game 45 to 14, they're going to call it short because of an injury that happened. Yeah, Jaquel Gillespie, we wish him a speedy recovery. 457 to go, the game is called, and Cox wins it 45 to 14 with Cole Johnson's four touchdown passes, one of them going to Matt Tomasi, who ran for 117 yards in the victory, while Keyshawn Brown threw for 149 yards and a touchdown for the Comets. All right, stay with us. We'll be back. We're going to head out west to the Allegheny Mountains and see what's going on out in the River Ridge District. It's Salem and Patrick Henry right here on Sports Report. Welcome back to Sports Report. Alongside Andy Mishaw, I am Matthew Hatfield. And Andy, just like the Granby Comets who are donning the pink uniforms to celebrate Breast Cancer Awareness Month, I brought the pink pen for this segment. There you go. We're, very, we're into the October. We're ready to go. All right. Out west, we go. Salem versus Patrick Henry. Undefeated Salem Spartans going to work against Patrick Henry team we've seen here a few times. We had that quarterback, Quashawn Coffey, can air it out. That Salem defense is mighty stingy, however, and it'll be, oh, a reverse here. Little trick play for PH Roanoke on the opening kickoff. Andrew Harris going to take it past midfield and just the start the Patriots needed to spring the upset. And here's that guy as Coffee Calfee dumps it off to Dakota Jones, and that, that didn't work too well for him that time. Now that tenacious Spartans front is coming fast and furious here. And now you see another guy who's got some fast and furious running ability. It's Alex Ramsey, a 33-yard run. He will rip off, and he is known for those tough runs. Built like Mike Allstott and hard to bring down here. Ooh, shaking a guy out there on his way to the end zone on a 24-yard touchdown scamper. Well, they say he's a fullback. He didn't run like a fullback. Hey, why not? Here, here he is again. Up the middle this time to the outside. Shakes a couple of guys. Get off of me. Runs fast. Look at, look at his speed. That is not a fullback. 
55-yard run thereabouts, and he takes them deep into Patrick Henry territory. Such great balance and footwork as well as vision. And another guy who's got some great feet here is Dante Claiborne. Part of that one-two punch last year, they graduated Coleman Foxley. You have Ramsey step in, and you have, of course, Claiborne. And that time, it'll be Ramsey finishing off the drive with a one-yard touchdown run, his second of the night. And I think he might find the end zone again, although this time it'll be Claiborne again getting to the outside, showing off his Jets. Yeah, Claiborne down to the one again, and just like last time, Ramsey says, all right, thanks, thank you, good job, I'll take it from here. One yard touchdown run, his second of the game, 21 to nothing, early on. This is not supposed to be an onside kick, it was supposed to be a pooch kick, but it worked out as an onside kick, picked up by Joseph Quinn. And quickly it'll be Salem now on the play action fake, quarterback Noah Beckley, the junior, avoiding the rush, and now showing off his scramble ability here. Great run by... Beckley, 24 yards for a touchdown, and everything's going right for Salem. Offense, defense, special teams, everything. Well, you said it's special teams. Here is Luke Owen on the punt return, and Owen gets to the outside and down the sidelines. He's going to follow the red line. I, don't know, I think that's lacrosse. They play like eight sports on this field. 76-yard touchdown for Luke Owen, and it just keeps on rolling. Not much for the home fans to cheer about at Gaynor Field Patriot Stadium until Quishon Coffey completes this one deep down the field. Great hookup with his receiver there. That'll be Josh Augustine, and you see right here the slant there for Augustine. Patrick Henry's passing attack, you know they can come from behind, and you know right here, Coffey has the ability to run it in for a touchdown, and the Patriots are on the comeback trail now, Andy, only down by 27. They're coming back, right? 34 to seven, they're trying to, no, 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 they're not. Oh. Claiborne says, yeah, good try, guys. I'm gonna get to the outside here, and I'm just gonna outrun everybody. That is a 52-yard touchdown run for Claiborne, and it's 41 to seven. All Salem in this one approaching a running clock, but Coffey going to keep Patrick Henry from letting it happen here. It completes this one to Isley Hobson, short gainer, and then marching down the field close to the 30-yard line. It'll be a fake here, and Coffey, as he maneuvers in the pocket, finding enough time and throws it down the field and is going to be caught here again by Hobson down to the 10-yard line. That's Coffey. He's a very athletic quarterback, keeps things alive, and he's got a decent arm, too. Fires this time into the end zone. Sammy Trusclair, 10-yard touchdown. They get on the board, 41-14, but they're not done yet in Salem. This is Beckley downtown to Vionte Tucker, 34-yard touchdown, and that will do it, 51-14, your final. The Spartans pouring it on with Ramsey and Claiborne combining for 307 yards rushing and four touchdowns. The Patriots held to 194 yards, 155 of those yards through the air by Coffee as the Patriots fall to unbeaten Salem. Staying in the River Ridge District, Blacksburg over Cave Spring, 20 to 14. Tyke West Terry, the freshman with two touchdown catches. The defense gets five interceptions. The Cave Spring defense registers eight sacks, but not enough as the Bruins prevail. And also Blacksburg, we just did this one. Blacksburg over Cave Spring, we just talked about this one. Tuscarora, Stonebridge Conference 14. Tuscarora staying unbeaten on the year, Andy, as they are a threat to win the 5A state title. They lost that game last year to L.C. Burke. Daniel Smith with four total touchdowns in that one, while Stonebridge falls under 500. Josh Brees with 139 yards rushing and a touchdown for the Bulldogs in that loss. Blue Ridge District now. There we are. We're moving along. Lord Bonatort, 59-18 over William Fleming. Look at the game by Noah Fletcher. 227 yards rushing, two touchdowns for him. Bradley Lithgow with two touchdown runs as well. While William Fleming got 269 yards passing and two touchdowns from Tyrell Adams, but not enough to keep up with Lord Botetot in that one. When we come back, we've got some Beach District action. It's Lanstown versus Salem, as well as the undefeated nationally ranked Ocean Lakes Dolphins going to Bayside High School to play the Marlins on their homecoming right here on Sports. Left undefeated Salem out in the Appalachian. We're going to come back to the beach now and find another Salem. This one goes up against Lansdowne in a sneaky good game. Yeah, Salem lost last year to Lansdowne. Andy, not going to happen again, do you think, with Salem coming in on a six-game winning streak and Lansdowne on a five-game losing streak? Injury riddled? I don't know. It seemed pretty confident coming in there. That is Lansdowne in the blue, Salem in the white, and this is Malik Butts in the white. He gets outside for a pretty good pickup. 
And Sun Devils surging on this six game winning streak because of the running game with Malik Butts, who goes 44 yards to Pater, putting Robert Jackson's visiting Sun Devils on top. Their only loss all year long, Andy, was 31 to 14 to Ocean Lakes, who's been blowing everybody out. Here's Bryson Stukes, the quarterback, and that is Noah Boone getting smacked by Cameron Butts. It's the brother of the running back. And the Butts and Butts combo working for Salem, and so is Austin Brown on a 29-yard reception from quarterback Tyler Watson-Jones, the first-year starting center caller. But uh-oh, fumble. Devontae Williams can't hang on to it, and Colby not in camper recovering it. <laughs> Stukes now. He's got some time. He's got too much time. He's got too much Boone, who's wide open, a 54-yard touchdown. And uh-oh, it's a 7-7 game. Now Boone picking up his first offer not too long ago from Howard. He's the next level player. So is Stukes, the trigger man for coach Tommy Riemann and Austin Brown. Another good reception there before Joseph White wrestles him down. And then that sets up the running game with Malik Butts. Guess who? That guy cutting back here, getting Salem closer to the red zone. And when they get in the red zone, they often find the end zone. Yeah, they find it here. This is Malik Butts again. A lot of butts in this highlight. That gets you an R rating. But this gets you a 20-yard touchdown run, and it's 14-7. to Doubling up the host Eagles on senior night. Stooks rolling to his right. Again, lots of time to find a receiver, but there you oh. go. An athletic play by Tracy Martin, the safety, with the pass breakup. Stooks not to be deterred. He gets to the outside, stumbles a little. Points, corrects traffic, you know. Uh oh, there's no football there. Stukes drops it, but it's picked up by Chris Tony, who saves the day for Lansdowne. Hey, Sean Rainey bringing him down quickly as that Salem defense playing spirited without Morris Vaughn, their leader, the junior linebacker on defense. Senior Knight, Stukes, and several others out there at midfield at halftime for that celebration. They're trying to celebrate an upset win at home on Senior Knight, and Stukes is the guy that has to direct it, although this time it'll be Jacoby oh. Taylor and friends bringing him down for a sack. Here's Watson Jones. He's dropped back. He fires over the middle for Joseph White. He's intercepted. Where'd he go? There he is. Picked off by White. He looks for some room, goes backwards, but you know what? He kept the football. A uh, sophomore is going to be a promising defender for the Eagles in the future. And there's Stukes, one of those dual threat guys. He can run it, he can throw it. Tommy Riemann's had some good quarterbacks. He's the latest. And that puts Lancetown in position to punch it in with Victor Jones from five yards out. Eagles hanging tough, wanting to break that five game losing streak. It's tied up late in the third. Tie game breaking the tie is Viandre Reed, a 33 yard field goal. Could not punch it in, but they get three, and it's 17 14. Salem back out on top. Early fourth quarter now, Stukes going for the bomb. He's got Noah Boone again, who gets past the secondary for a completion down inside the 30-yard line. And now Stukes, quarterback keeper, he's got some shifty ability when he runs it in the middle. And that'll set up the one-yard touchdown sneak. Lance Towns in the lead, Andy. Stukes sneaks it in. It's a 21-17 lead for the homestanding Lance Town Eagles. Not done yet though, Watson Jones outs and it's a throwback screen that didn't work. That was nearly a disaster. They get one more shot. Fourth and 20, Lansdown trying to pull the upset for the second year in a row on Salem. Watson Jones, last gasp ever, oh. picked off by Joseph White and the Eagles do it. Pulling the stunner in the beach, handing Salem only its second loss of the season, three and five. Eagles may not be playoff bound, but certainly a signature moment for their season. They win it 21 to 17. Second interception for White. Stukes with 221 total yards, two touchdowns. Boone with 108 yards receiving and a score. Malik Butts 145 yards rushing and two touchdowns for Salem, but not enough as the Eagles spring the upset. Up next, we stay in the beach as we head Ocean Lakes goes to Bayside. It's homecoming for Bayside. They want to pull an upset. They're going to need a lot to go right against this juggernaut that is Ocean Lakes, Andy. They've beaten everybody this year by double figures. Come in having won 38 straight in the beach in the regular season. And right off the bat, it'll be Kalen LeBourne, who played last year at Cox. This is his first season at Ocean Lakes, the junior. He is electrifying and showing why he's one of the top 30 juniors in the country. 90 yards on the kickoff return, and he's a guy that'll be playing on Saturdays, maybe even one day on Sundays. Well, we don't waste much time here, do they, at Ocean Lakes? Here we go. Second, LeBourne. Want to do it again? Sure, let's do it again. Let's hand it off this time. 23 yards. I mean, just running over people, dragging tacklers. Big run for LeBourne, look at the strength. See why he averages over 14 yards per carry. James Hammer on the field goal try from 35 yards. It's good, hammer time as Ocean Lakes leads it by double digits. All right, time to come back here. Here is Lampley, fires downfield. That's a completion to Richard Smith, 17 yard pickup. Bayside tries to get something going. Lampley steps up into the pocket. 
steps back into the pocket, gets tackled just outside of the pocket. Not much going on for them. Markel Hill and Deontay Bradley on that stop. Now it's Cody Cunningham down the field to Taj Capehart, another dynamic junior playmaker for that Ocean Lakes offense. And then it's going to be the reverse. LeBourne tossing it to Capehart, 13 yards, piece of cake. Touchdown for the oh, Dolphins. All those sneaky Dolphins. They're sneaky on the reverse. 17 to nothing. Then it's LeBourne. And uh oh, LeBourne drops it this time. Picked up by Tyree Dozier in a fumble in midair. Dozier picks it up. Not quite done yet for Bayside. Believe it or not, the score may not indicate it, but the Bayside defense hanging tough with three stops in the first half. But there is a freshman talent for Ocean Lakes on the corner sack. That is Tank Land. And then it's a screen pass and taking it to the house. It's Capehart again. He's got the blazing speed. He's gone. Nobody's catching him. 75 yards. And just when Bayside thinks they've held serve, Ocean Lakes just opens it up, another long touchdown. Does not take much. And here's the here's the homecoming parade. You got Aladdin there. And Even the Jeep. Yeah, everybody's here. There's your homecoming queen in your court there. Everybody's ready to go. Second half, here we go. It is DeSue, he's ready to go. He's ready to go for 18 yards on a little scramble play. Look at the size of the big guy. What a luxury to have when you have two quarterbacks, including a sophomore who already has two ACC offers. And then Levante Taylor, the five-star recruit wearing number five, headed to Florida State. Screen pass there getting him 25 yards and let DeSue finish it off. He did a good job throwing it, runs it in for a touchdown from eight yards out. Big body quarterback bangs it in, it's 30 to nothing. Here is Caleb Brody though, trying to come back up the middle. He picks up a good chunk of yardage out to midfield. Very next play is Lampley. Taraji Mitchell, that is a completion, a 12 yard pickup. They're moving the football a little bit. They are. Mitchell, known for his prowess on defense, is one of the top sophomore linebackers in the country, so playing some offense. And Kalen LeBourne, he plays offense all the time. Oh. And he does a lot of great things when he does it. 50 yards for the touchdown. He makes it look easy. They move the ball, but then they give it back, and this is what happens to him. Here's the pass to Sue. Jermaine Trotman, 40 yards, and that's a touchdown. Why not just keep rolling it up here? 44 to nothing. Lampley was the player of the week a week ago with four touchdown passes on seven completions against Lansdowne. There's one touchdown pass in this game to Armani Chapman, the sophomore, 27-yard hookup. Marlin's not going to quit, down 44-6, and Ocean Lakes, they're not done scoring either here. As it's Cody Cunningham to a wide-open Kalen LeBourne, and that's not the guy you want to leave wide open. No, you probably, probably want to know where number four is out there. 51-6, to six. are we done yet? No, not quite yet. Here's a sack. Lampley gets dropped by Dante Burke. Another sophomore for the Dolphins. They're just loaded with underclassmen, so they're not done after 2015. And there's another sophomore, Jalen Smith, on the 60-yard touchdown pass from DeSue with a minute 45 to go. 58-6 to six now, Ocean Lakes, and another sack by Burke Ooh. to put the icing on the kick. Yeah, they kept the pedal down there, didn't they? 58-6 to six is the final. Ocean Lakes all over Besa. 308 all-purpose yards and three touchdowns for LeBourne. DeSue with three touchdowns on four completions, netting him almost 200 yards, while Lampley throws for 187 yards and a touchdown in Bayside's second loss of the year. They drop to 6-2. and two. Ocean Lakes undefeated at 8-0. In the southeastern district, Crassfield up over Lakeland, 42-23. Two touchdowns apiece for Grant Holloway and Sean Dell Joyner, while freshman QB Tyquan Holloman throws for 135 yards and a touchdown for the Cavaliers. In the Bay Rivers district, it was Grafton over York, 17-9 on the other side of the wall. Defense does the job for Matt McLeod's Clippers. Five sacks from Ray Gonzalez, two picks from Tavares Knoll, while Ramsey Hyatt throws for 117 yards and runs for a touchdown for the Falcons in defeat. Eastern district now, Churchill over Northland, 12-6, they doubled them up. First time in that Portsmouth rivalry that Churchill has won since 2009. Corey Goss with a touchdown pass, a touchdown run and 173 yards to lead Alonzo Ricks' truckers. And our player of the week back in the Southeastern goes to Tyon Smith from Indian River, the running back. 219 yards with two touchdowns rushing. We'll throw another 83 yards and a touchdown receiving for 302 total yards and three touchdowns as Indian River shuts out Hickory 44 to nothing. Making all the proud Indian River alums like Andy Michal happy to see a great performance there by Ty and Smith, so kudos to him. And we're out of time for Andy Michal. I'm Matt Hatfield. We'll catch you next time right here on the Cox Sports Report.